all of us are susceptible to people telling us stuff from the time we're born. We don't know. I'm a little kid. I'm born and I come into the world and people start telling me stuff. Who's the person I'm going to trust the very most after being born? Your mother. There is no doubt about that. If you can't trust your mother, I want to know who you can trust. This is the one that gives you physical nourishment from her own body. Gives you the ability to speak a language. That's why it's called your mother tongue. This is the one that teaches you how to walk. Teaches you what you know. My mother was a school teacher and she taught me what I know of the Latin language. She taught me what I know about math. She would sit with me many times after school, on the, especially in the summertime, trying to make me be a scholar. She wanted me to be a professor of something. I didn't make it. <laughs> but she tried. And I know that all the mothers want the best for their kids. Even, even the worst of mothers still, she was, still wants the best for her children. So how about if your mother's, from the very beginning, the things she's teaching you are not true, then what will you do? You have no reason to doubt her. But in the West, especially in the United States, we are lied to from the time we're born. Our mothers lie to us, our fathers lie to us, our uncles, aunts, cousins, grandparents, teachers, preachers, all of them lie to us about some very important things to us. Now, I was in university in Indiana and I said it just that same way. Why? I wanted to get a big reaction because Muslim were not Muslim. And they gave me the reaction I wanted. You know, they were like, ah, what? How dare you say that? Boy, do you know where you are? Don't you call my mother no liar. I was up on a big stage, I wouldn't worry. I said, okay, okay, settle down, settle down. They, they were, the audience was going pretty wild, you know. And I said, okay, take it easy. I just have one question. After you answer the question, we'll see what I said. How old were you when you found out there was no Santa Claus? You should have seen their faces. By the way, they weren't laughing. They were like, oh, God. You see, because I do remember that moment real clear. It sticks out in my mind even today. I came home from third grade in December, parked my bike, ran in the house. Mom, 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 what's the matter now? She's washing dishes, you know. I said, Mom, the kids at school, they're saying there is no Santa Claus. She didn't even look up. She just said, don't tell your sisters. that moment, I was thinking, you know, like Luke Skywalker, my mother has gone over to the dark side. <laughs> it might seem funny now, but it was pathetic. My heart jumped up in my chest. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack and I ran to my room crying. And I was thinking, I want to call my grandmother. I want to call my grandmother. I want her to tell my mother this is a big lie. Oh, I know if I call my grandmother because she would never lie. That's my grandmother. She'll set everybody straight. My dad, I don't know, because, you know, we didn't have a close relationship back then. But still, you know what I mean? He'll set it straight because I know he's a straight shooter. Then I thought about it. Christmas coming up a couple nights. So what I did, I laid there on the couch you know, and listen to him playing the radio. Back then we just had radio and listened to that. And the music coming over there for Christmas, Merry Christmas, all that stuff going on and on. I kept pretending like I was asleep. Then I heard my mom say, shouldn't we wait a little longer until, you know, maybe he goes to bed. Dad said, ah, he's asleep, he'll never wake up. I said, man, I got him going. I had my back to him, I was, put my head down in the couch and I'm listening real close. And she said, okay, let's go get the stuff. No way. No way. And I heard him bringing this stuff in. And one of the things was a, a bicycle for me. And you know, as much as I wanted that bicycle, it was killing me to know that they 
had done this. And I still didn't want to believe it. And the next morning, the next morning when they're saying, okay, wake up, it's time for Christmas, Santa's been here. I went out there and I looked and I knew as soon as I looked at the card on there, I knew the signature, my mother forged Santa's name. <laughs> it took time for me to get over it. I didn't like it. And then I was thinking, you know what? In a few months, oh my God, you don't mean to tell me they're going to tell me there's no rabbit that lays colored eggs? <laughs> what next? If you don't think that has an effect on children, let me share with you something. Islam insists that we never lie about anything, especially anything to do with religion. Ya yulladhina amanu attaqallah wa kulu kaulin sadida. O you who believe, have fear for your Lord, for the punishment of your Lord. And always speak the truth. There's no room in Islam for liars. Allah speaks about liars over and over and over in the Quran. One of the chapters of the Quran deals with this subject so strong that it becomes almost like a stanza, a chorus being repeated over and over. Chapter 55, Surah Al-Rahman, Fabi'i ala rabbikum atukadiban. Which of the favors of your Lord will you do then deny? It's very clear. How many times is that in there? Many times, isn't it? Is a lot like liars? Kadib, Kadiban, that's two liars. Kadib is a liar. And Allah talks about constantly in the Quran, those who give Kadib to the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who give the lie to the proofs and the signs of Allah. There's no room in Islam for liars. There's one hadith, I've been told that it's not sahih, but it is perhaps Hassan. This means that we won't use it for fada, anything more than fada'il. We won't use it for a, a rukun of Islam. But it means that you consider this. Saying that the Prophet ﷺ had responded when somebody said about a joban, could he be a believer? A joban is a coward. He runs away in a war. Could he still be a believer? He said, yeah. They said, what about somebody who is uh, like bakhil? This is somebody who is stingy. He won't give any charity. Could he still be a believer? He said, yeah. What about somebody that's kadib, a liar? No. No. There's no room in Islam for this. Now, that I made my point, that was for the Muslims, by the way.